What's the worst thing you've witnessed at a wedding? Story one. The wedding was set in a stunning European party destination, a place that held significant meaning for the bride, as it was her mother's home country. The journey was long, about 12 hours of travel, but the scenery and the promise of a memorable celebration made it all worthwhile. We were among the closest guests in terms of travel distance, which put into perspective just how much effort everyone had made to be there. The ceremony itself was breathtaking. The bride looked radiant, and the groom couldn't have been happy. The atmosphere was filled with joy and anticipation. As we moved into the reception, the bride stood up to give her speech. She started beautifully, referencing her departed mother and how much she would have loved to be there. It was a touching tribute, and many of us were moved by her heartfelt words. However, the tone of her speech shifted dramatically. She began to reminisce about her trips back to her mother's home country, not just as sentimental journeys, but as wild, party-filled escapades. She detailed her yearly visits, painting vivid pictures of her youthful shenanigans with an almost nostalgic glee. The anecdotes included stories of partying, carefree nights, and all the fun she had before meeting her husband. As the speech continued, it became increasingly clear that she was sharing way too much information. She talked about her ho wings, a metaphor for her wild, single days, and how she decided to leave them hanging in a bush for some other girl to wear once she met the love of her life. The phrase was awkward, to say the least, and the details she provided left many of us cringing. Luckily, a significant portion of the congregation couldn't speak English, so they didn't understand the more risque parts of her speech. However, those of us who did were left in stunned silence, exchanging bewildered glances. The shift from a heartfelt tribute to an almost confessional tone was jarring, and it felt like a strange, inappropriate way to share such personal stories at her wedding. Story 2 the wedding was set to be a beautiful celebration held at an elegant venue with meticulously planned details. The bride and groom were two of the kindest people I knew, and they had been looking forward to this day for months. Friends and family gathered, dressed in their finest attire, ready to share in the couple's joy. However, as the guests began to arrive, I noticed an unusual buzz in the crowd. My ex fiance who was supposedly one of the groom's best friends, had arrived in a full-blown Halloween costume. It wasn't even a subtle or elegant costume. He was dressed as a character from a horror movie, complete with makeup and props. The absurdity of it was staggering. Here we were, at a formal wedding, and he looked like he had just stepped out of a Halloween party. At first, I thought it was some sort of joke or misunderstanding, but the reality quickly set in. He wasn't kidding. He strutted around, making sure everyone noticed him, and relished in the shocked and confused reactions he was getting. It was painfully clear that his intention was to draw as much attention to himself as possible, regardless of how inappropriate it was. The bride and groom were visibly taken aback. The bride, who had dreamed of a perfect, elegant wedding, was almost in tears. The groom, trying to keep the peace, approached my ex-fiancé and quietly asked him to change into something more suitable. My ex-fiancé, however, brushed it off with a laugh, saying something about how he thought it would be fun and memorable. Fun and memorable, indeed, but for all the wrong reasons. As the ceremony began, the tension was palpable. Guests were whispering and glancing at my ex-fiancé, whose costume stood out like a sore thumb amidst the sea of formal wear. The beautiful vows and heartfelt moments were overshadowed by his outrageous outfit. It was a textbook example of narcissistic behavior, demanding attention and making everything about him, even on a day that had nothing to do with him. Story 3. My girlfriend and I were there to support her co-worker, excited to witness their special day. Everything went smoothly during the ceremony. The couple exchanged heartfelt vows, and the guests were beaming with happiness as they said their I do's. In a burst of exuberance, the newlyweds decided to make their exit down the aisle a bit more memorable. With huge smiles on their faces and hands clasped together, they decided to run down the aisle after being pronounced husband and wife. The crowd cheered, clapping and laughing, sharing in their joyous spontaneity. However, as they reached about halfway down the aisle, the bride's high heel caught on the edge of the carpet. In what seemed like slow motion, she tripped and fell flat on her face. The joyous cheers turned into gasps of horror as everyone realized she wasn't getting up. The bride was out cold, and her nose was visibly broken, blood starting to trickle down her face. The groom, in shock, knelt beside her, trying to rouse her as the guests quickly transitioned from celebratory to concern. My girlfriend, a nurse by profession, immediately rushed to the bride's side to offer help. The room was filled with a tense silence as everyone waited, worried about the bride's condition. Paramedics were called, and they arrived swift. They carefully lifted the bride onto a stretcher, ensuring she was stable. The groom stayed by her side, his face a mix of worry and guilt, holding her hand and whispering words of comfort. As they wheeled her out to the ambulance, the guests stood in stunned silence, not knowing what to say or do. 
the reception that followed was subdued. The initial excitement of the day was overshadowed by concern for the bride. The groom made a brief appearance at the reception to update everyone, letting us know that the bride was being treated and would recover, though she would have a broken nose to remember the day by. He thanked everyone for their support and understanding, promising to keep them updated on her condition. The evening took on a more somber tone, with guests quietly talking among themselves about the shocking turn of events. Despite the subdued atmosphere, there was a sense of solidarity and support for the cup. People shared stories, offered their best wishes, and tried to make the best of the situation. Story 4. At one wedding, the groom's childhood friend, who I'll call MC, showed up high as a kite. Now, this guy was known for being a bit eccentric, but that day, he took it to a whole new level. He got hold of the microphone during the reception and started rambling about cats. I mean, really going off about their mystical powers and how they were the true rulers of the world. The father of the bride, a no-nonsense kind of guy, had to physically drag MC away from the stage, muttering apologies to the bewildered guests. The groom was embarrassed, the bride was horrified, and the rest of us were left trying to figure out if we should laugh or pretend we didn't see anything. At a different wedding, the bride's aunt, who was a nun, gave one of the most memorable toasts I've ever heard. She stood up, raised her glass, and with a big smile said, Congratulations to the happy couple on finally no longer living in sin. The room fell silent for a second before erupting in nervous laughter. The bride's face turned crimson and the groom nearly choked on his drink. It was a bold move, but you could tell it was coming from a place of love, albeit with a heavy dose of religious conviction. Another wedding took the cake for sheer awkwardness. The bride's parents were in the middle of a divorce, but they hadn't told anyone yet. They decided to put on a united front for the wedding but it was painfully obvious something was off. They couldn't stand to be near each other and barely exchanged a word the entire day. During the family photos, they stood as far apart as possible without making it look too obvious. Their attempts at pretending everything was fine only made everyone more uncomfortable. It was like watching a bad play where the actors had forgotten their lines. The tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Story 5. He bride looked stunning. The groom was beaming and the guests were all in good spirits. Then came the moment for that age-old, and if you ask me, somewhat foolish question. If anyone has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. For a second, there was silence, as there always is, and then, out of nowhere, a man stood up. He looked determined and was carrying a small box. As he walked up to the altar, you could feel the tension rise. Everyone was on edge, not sure what to expect. My mind went to the worst possible place, I thought that box might contain a bomb or something equally horrifying. My heart was pounding. The man reached the front, turned to the bride, and declared, I love you. The room was dead silent, filled with a mixture of shock, confusion, and a little bit of fear. The groom's face went pale and the bride just stood there, looking stunned. The pastor, keeping his composure, said something incredibly wise and calming. If you love her, he said, you'll let her find her happiness. There was a moment of stillness, and then the man nodded tears in his eyes, and retreated to his seat. The tension in the room didn't immediately dissipate, but there was a collective sigh of relief. The ceremony continued, albeit with a slightly shaken crowd, but the drama wasn't over. After the wedding, when everyone was milling around, trying to make sense of what had just happened, the bride's teenage daughter stormed over to the guy. She was furious, and before anyone could stop her, she attacked, she screamed at him, calling him selfish and accusing him of trying to ruin her mother's happiness. The guy didn't fight back. He just stood there and took it, looking more defeated with every word she hurled at him. People eventually intervened, pulling the girl away and trying to calm her down. The man quietly left the venue, and the buzz of the incident lingered in the air for the rest of the day. Conversations were dominated by what had happened, with everyone offering their own take on the situation. Story 6. My wife and I had the honor of him seeing our friend's wedding, and let me tell you, it was a blast. We had a great time getting the crowd hyped, sharing stories, and making sure everything flowed smoothly. The whole event was beautiful, the kind of wedding you'd see in a movie. The ceremony went off without a hitch, and the reception was in full swing. Everyone was having a great time, laughing, dancing, and celebrating the newlyweds. Then came the moment for the father-daughter dance, one of the most anticipated parts of any wedding. My wife and I called the father of the bride to come up and dance with his daughter. It's one of those heartwarming moments that always brings a tear to the eye. But this time, it didn't go as planned go as a across the dance floor he called back can my granddaughter join us he was referring to the bride's 10 year old niece who was known for being massively spoiled and entitled you could see the bride's face fall she looked crushed and with a voice full of disappointment and confusion she said what no everyone was stunned into silence and just like that 
He passed on dancing with his daughter at her own wedding. He chose to sit it out rather than honor that special moment. The bride stood there, heartbroken, trying to hold it together in front of all her guests. The room was filled with an awkward tension. My wife and I were in shock, struggling to figure out how to smooth over the moment and keep the night going. After a few beats, the groom stepped in to comfort his bride, taking her hand and leading her to the dance floor. They shared a dance together, but you could tell it wasn't the same. The bride put on a brave face, but the hurt was evident. The magic of that father-daughter dance moment was lost. Story 7. The couple getting married had both recently divorced, their union the result of a short, scandalous affair. Their infidelity had been found out, leading to a lot of bad blood. As a result, hardly anyone showed up to the wedding. They had booked a space for 120 guests, but only about 20 people came. The empty chairs were a stark reminder of the fallout from their affair. The groom's friends boycotted the event, leaving him without a best man. At the last minute, he had to ask a guy from work to step in. This guy looked incredibly uncomfortable, like he was wondering how he ended up in the middle of this train wreck. The ceremony itself was painfully off. The couple had written their own vows, which is usually a touching personal touch, but the groom's vows included a line that made everyone's jaw drop. If you ever leave me, I will find you and bring you back, and you'll fall back in line because you'll know that you were wrong. The room went dead silent. You could see people shifting uncomfortably in their seats, trying to process what they just heard. The reception, already off to a rocky start, quickly went downhill. After the cake was cut, the bride decided to smash a piece into the groom's face. What's usually a playful tradition turned into a complete meltdown. The groom was livid. He stormed off, disappearing for the rest of the reception. The bride, in a bizarre display of either defiance or denial, just stood there laughing and then started dancing by herself on the empty dance floor. It was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever witnessed. Then, as if the situation couldn't get any more surreal, the bride's parents decided this was the perfect moment to renew their own vows. They stepped up and started their own mini ceremony in the midst of all this tension. When no one reacted with the enthusiasm they expected, the bride's mom snapped, really, at the dwindling group of guests. The whole scene was a mix of absurdity and discomfort. Story 8. I once attended a wedding that was quite the spec, not because of its grandeur, but because of the series of unbelievable mishaps that unfolded. It was a traditional Catholic ceremony, and everything seemed to be going smoothly at first. The church was beautifully decorated, and the atmosphere was filled with that special blend of solemnity and joy that only a wedding can bring. Things took a turn when the priest abruptly stopped the ceremony. He looked over at the photographer, who had been diligently capturing every moment from what seemed to be an acceptable distance. The priest wasn't having it. Hey, buddy, cut it out, he barked, his arms crossed and his expression stern. The photographer, eyes glued to his camera, didn't bud. The priest repeated himself, louder this time. We won't continue until you step back. The tension in the room was palp. Guests exchanged nervous glances, and the bride and groom shifted uncomfortably at the altar. This standoff continued, the priest growing increasingly agitated, while the photographer remained oblivious. It was like a bizarre standoff, with the priest holding the ceremony hostage. Finally, the wedding planner, looking flustered and a bit panicked, hustled down the aisle. She announced, with an urgency that cut through the awkwardness, that the photographer was deaf. The revelation hung in the air for a moment, and the priest's face turned a shade of red. With a mixture of embarrassment and irritation, the priest gestured for the photographer to move back, which he did once he realized what was going on. The ceremony resumed, but the mood had shifted. The guests were on edge, and the bride and groom looked like they wanted to be anywhere else. Just when we thought things couldn't get worse, the priest managed to bungle the couple's names during the vows. He called the bride and groom by the wrong names, not just once, but multiple times. Each misstep felt like a punch to the gut for the couple, who were trying to keep their composure amidst the chaos. You could see the bride's forced smile, the groom's clenched jaw, and the guests whispering among themselves. The ceremony finally concluded, but the vibe was off. What was supposed to be a beautiful, sacred moment had turned into a series of unfortunate events. The reception was a mix of laughter and disbelief as people recounted the ceremony's mishaps. The bride and groom, to their credit, handled it with grace and even managed to laugh about it by the end of the night. Story 9. I had heard of people losing their cool at weddings, but this was something else entirely. It was as if he had transformed into a different person, like Beast, from the movie Split. One minute, he was mingling with guests, and the next, he was stripping down to nothing his eyes wild and unrecognizable. The atmosphere shifted from festive to tense in an instant. Chaos erupted when he started attacking the bridesmaids, his screams echoing through the hall. He kept shouting mommy in a demon-like voice over and over, a sound that still haunts me. The groomsmen, realizing the gravity of the situation, rushed to restrain him. It took all of them to hold him down, and even then, it was barely enough. He was biting, scratching, and gouging at their eyes, 
his strength seemingly superhuman. The scene was horrifying. Guests were screaming, children were crying, and the bride was in tears, her special day descending into madness. The damage he caused was extensive. He managed to wreak havoc throughout the venue, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. By the time the police and ambulance arrived, he had caused $5,000 worth of damage and injured numerous people. The most harrowing moment was when he bit a huge chunk out of the groom's father. The man's screams of pain will forever be etched in my memory. Several people were left with serious injuries, and the psychological impact was profound. Many guests, especially the children who witnessed the beginning of the rampage, needed trauma counseling afterwards. The wedding, which was supposed to be a beautiful beginning for my friend and her new husband, turned into a traumatic event that no one could have foreseen. The bride's brother was taken away by the authorities, and the rest of the night was a blur of police reports, medical assistance, and shocked guests trying to process what had just happened. Story 10. The reception was in full swing at this upscale venue, complete with a private bathroom that opened up to a larger hallway. A bunch of us were hanging out in the hallway, chatting and enjoying the evening. Someone, needing to use the bathroom, walked over and opened the door, assuming it was empty since it wasn't locked. The door swung open, and there, in all their drunken glory, was the bride and a guy who wasn't the groom. He was someone one of her bridesmaids had brought as a date. They were caught in the act, right there in the bathroom. The bride was up against the sink, and the guy was clearly as shocked as she was when the door opened. The look on their faces was one of utter horror. In the next instant, chaos erupted. The guy pulled out in a panic, and in a scene that could only be described as both tragic and comical, the bride suddenly lost control and, well, let's just say she made quite the mess all over the place. As if that wasn't enough, the guy, overwhelmed by the situation and probably the alcohol, vomited all over her from behind. The hallway filled with gasps and exclamations of disbelief as people tried to process what they were seeing. The bride, who had been the picture of elegance just moments before, was now a disheveled mess, and the guy looked like he wanted to disappear into thin air. Someone quickly slammed the door shut, but the damage was done. The whispers and shocked conversations spread like wildfire. The reception, which had been a lively celebration, took on a much more somber tone. The bride's dress was ruined, and there was no hiding what had happened. The groom was nowhere to be seen during the initial aftermath, but word got to him quick. When he finally emerged, his face was a mix of anger, hurt, and disbelief. You could see the betrayal etched into his features. Story 12. I remember meeting up with a friend for drinks one evening, expecting our usual light-hearted banter and catching up. But when he arrived, he looked visibly shaken, his face pale, and his hands trembling as he clutched his drink. I knew something was seriously wrong. Before I could even ask, he blurted out what had happened on his way to the bar. He'd witnessed a horrifying accident that had left him deeply rattled. As he walked towards the bar, he saw a bridal party crossing the street, all laughing and joyful, probably heading to continue their celebration. Out of nowhere, a car came barreling through, running a red light at full speed. The next moments were a blur of chaos and screams. The car plowed straight into the group, hitting one of the bridesmaids with such force that she was dragged under the vehicle. My friend watched in horror as the car screeched to a halt. The bridesmaid trapped underneath, motionless. It was clear she had passed away on impact, her body caught under the wreckage. The joy and excitement that had filled the air moments before were replaced with shock, panic, and grief. He described how the rest of the bridal party, initially stunned, quickly dissolved into a scene of anguish and despair. The bride, still in her wedding dress, was on her knees, screaming and crying, trying to reach her friend while others held her back, fearing she'd get hurt too. Bystanders rushed to help, calling emergency services, but it was painfully evident that nothing could be done for the bridesmaid. The image of that tragic scene was etched into my friend's mind. The sound of the crash, the sight of the young woman's body, and the heart-wrenching cries of her friends and family were things he couldn't shake off. As he recounted the events, I could see how deeply it had affected him. It was a stark reminder of how fragile life is and how quickly everything can change. We sat there in the bar, the usual background noise of laughter and clinking glasses now feeling distant and inappropriate. My friend couldn't stop replaying the scene in his head, questioning if there was anything he could have done or if he could have somehow prevented it. But deep down, we both knew it was one of those tragic moments that no one could have anticipated or stopped. We spent the rest of the evening talking it through, trying to make sense of the senseless. It was a sobering experience that put everything into perspective. The randomness of the accident, the sudden loss of life, and the ripple effect it had on everyone involved were hard to comprehend. Story 13. I attended a wedding that was full of joy and laughter, with the bride and groom beaming and the guests having a great time. Everything was going perfectly until the cake cutting ceremony. It was supposed to be one of those picture-perfect moments, with the bride and groom sharing a sweet, symbolic slice of cake. 
As the couple stood together, ready to cut the cake, one of the bridesmaids, who was standing nearby, suddenly started to tremble. At first, no one really noticed or understood what was happening. The music was playing, people were chatting, and everyone's attention was focused on the bride and groom. But within seconds, the bridesmaid's shaking turned into a full-blown seizure. She lost consciousness and, in an instant, fell forward with incredible force, face-planting right onto the table next to her. The impact was hard and loud, and the whole room fell silent as everyone tried to process what had just happened. It felt like time stopped for a moment. The festive atmosphere was replaced by a sense of shock and concern. People rushed to her aid, some guests immediately dialing 911, while others tried to clear space around her. A few guests who were medically trained sprang into action, checking her vitals and making sure she was safe until professional help could arrive. The bride and groom were visibly shaken, their happiness overshadowed by worry for their friend. For those of us watching, it was a terrifying sight. Seizures can be incredibly unsettling if you've never seen one before, and this one was no different. The bridesmaid's sudden collapse and the ensuing confusion left everyone in a state of panic. But amidst the chaos, there was a remarkable sense of community and support. People who had been strangers just moments before were now united in their concern for the bridesmaid. Fortunately, the paramedics arrived quickly and took over. They assessed her condition, provided the necessary care, and eventually transported her to the hospital for further evaluation. The news that she would be okay was a huge relief to everyone. The bride and groom, while still shaken, tried to regain their composure and carry on with the celebration. But it was clear that the incident had cast a shadow over the evening. Story 14. Back then, I was young, dumb, and completely candy-addled. By candy, I mean I was indulgent and impulsive. Living life without a second thought about consequences, I was dating this wonderful girl who, in hindsight, deserved so much better than the way I treated her. The wedding was a grand affair. The bride looked stunning. The groom was all smiles, and the reception was a blast. There was plenty of food, drinks, and music, and everyone was in high spirits. At some point during the evening, I found myself slow dancing with one of the bridesmaids. It started out innocently enough, but soon we were making out and getting a little too handsy right there on the dance floor. The problem was my girlfriend was sitting at a nearby table, watching the whole thing unfold. I was too wrapped up in the moment to notice her tears or the pain I was causing. It wasn't until much later, when the damage was done, that I realized how deeply I had hurt her. Seeing her cry, heartbroken and humiliated, is an image that still haunts me. In that moment, I was the epitome of reckless youth, selfish and thoughtless. It took me a while to fully understand the impact of my actions that night. My girlfriend, who had put up with my antics and loved me despite my flaws, deserved so much more respect than I had given her. That night was a turning point for me. The guilt and shame of what I had done forced me to take a long, hard look at myself. I realized I needed to change to grow up and become a better person. I couldn't keep hurting the people I cared about and expect things to turn out fine. Over the years, I cleaned up my act. I stopped being impulsive and started thinking about the consequences of my actions. I learned to respect and value the people in my life, to treat them with the kindness and consideration they deserve. I'm not proud of who I was back then, but I'm thankful for the lessons I learned and the person I've become. Today, I'm in a much better place. I'm in a healthy, loving relationship built on mutual respect and trust. I still think about that night at the wedding sometimes, not with pride, but as a reminder of how far I've come. It was a painful lesson, but one that ultimately helped me grow into a better, more mindful person. Story 15. It was a gorgeous outdoor Baptist wedding, the kind where the scenery looks like it's straight out of a magazine. Flowers everywhere, a clear blue sky, and all the guests dressed to the nines. The bride was someone I didn't know person. She was the daughter of my wife's co-worker and we were invited more out of obligation than anything else. There I was, sitting in the blazing sun, dressed in a suit, sweating like crazy, and trying to make the best of the situation. The ceremony started out beautifully enough. The music was lovely, the bride looked radiant, and the groom couldn't stop smiling. But then, it came time for the vows, and that's when things took a bizarre turn. The bride began to speak, and her vows were unlike anything I had ever heard. She promised to submit her entire identity and will to her husband, saying that from this day forward, he would make all decisions for her. She vowed to obey him in all things and let him guide their lives without question. I glanced around, half expecting to see other guests looking as bewildered as I felt. But everyone seemed to take it in stride, as if this was completely normal. I couldn't believe my ears. Here we were, in the 21st century, and I was listening to a woman pledging to give up her autonomy entirely. It felt like stepping back in time to an era when women had no say in their own lives. I shifted uncomfortably in my seat, the sweat from the relentless sun mixing with the unease I felt from what I was witnessing. 
The groom, on the other hand, recited his vows with a sense of pride. He spoke of his responsibility to lead, protect, and make decisions for both of them. It was clear he took this role very seriously, but it was equally clear that this arrangement was deeply ingrained in their beliefs and expectations. After the ceremony, as we mingled with other guests, I couldn't shake the feeling of discomfort. I overheard snippets of conversations where people praised the vows, calling them beautiful and traditional. It was surreal. My wife and I exchanged glances, silently agreeing that this was not something we could ever understand or condone. The reception was just as beautiful as the ceremony, but the whole event had been tainted for me. I couldn't stop thinking about the bride's future, how she had willingly given up her voice in her own life. It felt profoundly wrong, and I couldn't reconcile it with the values of equality and partnership that I believed in. On the drive home, my wife and I finally talked about it. She was just as disturbed as I was, and we spent the rest of the evening discussing how important it is to have mutual respect and shared decision-making in a relationship. It made us appreciate our own marriage even more, where we support each other as equals. That wedding left a lasting impression on me, but not for the reasons you'd hope a wedding would. It was a stark reminder that not everyone shares the same views on marriage and gender roles, and that there are still pockets of deeply ingrained traditions that seem out of place in modern times. Story 16. Everyone was in high spirits, ready to celebrate the newlyweds at the reception. The venue was decorated to perfection, the food was fantastic, and the drinks were flowing. But as the evening progressed, I began to notice tension building among the bridal party. Whispers and side glances suggested that something was brewing beneath the surface. It turned out that rumors had been circulating about the bride, gossip that cast a shadow over her character and relationship with the groom. No one knew where the rumors had started, but they quickly spread like wildfire. The breaking point came during a toast. The best man, clearly fed up with the murmurs and side conversations, stood up and shouted, All complainers need to shut the F up! His words echoed through the hall, silencing the guests and bringing the underlying tensions to a head. The groom, visibly angered by the best man's outburst, shot back, Don't talk to my wife like that! That was all it took to ignite the powder keg. What started as a heated exchange of words quickly escalated into an all-out brawl. The bridal party, split into factions, erupted into chaos, throwing punches, shoving each other, and screaming accusations. Guests tried to intervene, but the fight was too intense. Tables were overturned, glasses shattered, and the once beautiful reception hall became a battle. The bride, caught in the middle, tried to defend herself and her honor, swinging at anyone who came too close. Someone must have called the cops because it wasn't long before sirens wailed outside. Police officers rushed in, trying to break up the melee. It was a scene straight out of a movie. People being dragged apart, handcuffed, and escorted out of the venue. The bride, groom, best man, and several others found themselves cuffed and stuffed into police cars. The rest of us stood around in shock, watching as the reception unraveled in the most dramatic fashion. The beautiful celebration had turned into a spectacle of anger and violence leaving everyone in disbelief. The police presence finally managed to restore some order, but the damage was done. As the dust settled, those of us who remained tried to piece together what had just happened. Conversations buzzed with disbelief and fragments of the rumors that had sparked the whole debacle. The newlyweds' special day was forever marred by the chaotic events of the night. Story 17. My ex-girlfriend was a bridesmaid, and this was her friend's big day, so I was there to support her, but I had no idea what kind of chaos awaited us. From the start, things were off. The ceremony was set in a picturesque outdoor venue, but all the beauty in the world couldn't mask the impending disaster. As the bride began her walk down the aisle, she wobbled precariously on her high heels. Just a few steps in, she lost her balance and went down hard. Gasps echoed through the crowd, and a few guests rushed to help her up. She laughed it off, clearly too inebriated to care much about the fall. Everyone settled back down. The bride was propped up by her father, and the ceremony continued. But the officiant, apparently oblivious to the idea of decorum, decided to take a deep dive into the couple's history. Instead of the usual heartwarming story about how they met, he bluntly announced, These two started with a one-night stand that turned into something more when they found out she was pregnant. The audience was stunned into silence. Some people shifted uncomfortably in their seats, while others exchanged awkward glances. The bride and groom stood there, seemingly unfazed, though it was hard to tell if that was due to their lack of sobriety or a genuine lack of shame. The officiant carried on as if he hadn't just dropped a bombshell, wrapping up the ceremony without another hitch. As for me, I felt like an outsider in this bizarre drama. My ex-girlfriend, busy with her bridesmaid duties, had warned me that her friend could be a bit of a wild card, but nothing could have prepared me for this. The bride refused to acknowledge me the entire time. I tried to introduce myself, but she blatantly ignored me focusing instead on downing more drinks and mingling with the guests she actually knew. 
Story 18. My brother had the craziest experience DJing a wedding that still makes me shake my head in disbelief. He was hired to DJ a wedding for a Mexican bride and a Puerto Rican group. From the start, there was clear animosity between the two families. Tensions were high and it seemed like a fight could break out at any moment. The reception was a beautiful setup with colorful decorations and a lively atmosphere. The bride and groom were trying their best to keep things smooth and enjoyable, but you could sense the underlying tension. My brother, being the professional he is, kept the music going and tried to maintain a festive mood despite the brewing storm. As the night wore on, the animosity only grew. Near fights erupted throughout the evening with family members exchanging heated words and shoves. It was a constant battle to keep things from escalating into a full-blown brawl. My brother managed to diffuse several situations by switching up the music and distracting the guests with dance songs and fun announcements. But the real trouble came towards the end of the night. The bride's family, already on edge and looking for an outlet for their frustration, decided that my brother needed to give them a discount. This wasn't a polite negotiation, though. They were aggressive and unreasonable. My brother, trying to remain calm and professional, explained his rates and the agreed-upon fee, but they weren't having any of it. Things took a turn for the worse when one of the bride's uncles, fueled by alcohol and anger, decided to take matters into his own hand. He grabbed a piece of my brother's DJ equipment and hurled it across the room. That was the tipping. Suddenly, other family members joined in, and it became a chaotic scene with equipment being thrown and people shouting. My brother, caught in the middle of this madness, tried to protect his gear while avoiding getting hurt. It was absolute chaos. The bride and groom, horrified by their family's behavior, rushed over to intervene. They were deeply apologetic, trying to calm everyone down and stop the destruction. Story 19. The bride and groom were mingling with guests, and everyone was enjoying the festive atmosphere. My nephew, a cute little guy with a mischievous grin, was charming everyone with his adorable antics. He had discovered a new favorite snack, grapes. He began innocently enough, going from table to table, asking guests for grapes. Given how sweet and polite he was, no one could resist his request. The problem was that nobody realized everyone else was also giving him grapes. My nephew, delighted by the steady supply, kept eating them without a care in the world. As the evening progressed, my sister, his mom, was busy catching up with relatives and friends, unaware of her son's growing grape collection. My nephew, meanwhile, continued his grape quest oblivious to the potential consequences of consuming so many. It wasn't long before his tiny stomach had reached its limit. Just before dinner was about to be served, my nephew started to look a bit pale. I noticed him standing still in the middle of the dance floor, his usually energetic demeanor subdued. Before anyone could react, he suddenly vomited, a cascade of partially digested grapes spilling out onto the pristine floor. There was a collective gasp as the guests nearest him jumped back in surprise. Unfortunately, two people were caught in the crossfire their formal attire now decorated with grape-stained splotches. My sister rushed over, horrified but trying to comfort her son, while the rest of us tried to stifle our laughter at the sheer absurdity of the situation. The staff quickly sprang into action, cleaning up the mess and helping the unfortunate guests change into more casual clothes provided by the hotel. Despite the chaos, the mood remained lighthearted. The bride and groom, initially concerned, couldn't help but laugh along with everyone else. Dinner continued without further incident, and my nephew, now feeling much better, was the center of attention for the rest of the evening. He even managed to sneak in a few more grapes, though under much stricter supervision. Story 20, wedding reception in 2014 that, for better or worse, I'll never forget. I was a teenage guy back then, still figuring out who I was and definitely not known for my dancing skill. The night was lively, the drinks were flowing, and the DJ was doing a fantastic job of keeping everyone on their feet. That was until Shake It Off by Taylor Swift came on. Now, at that time, I wasn't exactly up to date with pop culture or Taylor Swift's discography. I heard the beat drop and thought, why not give it a shot? I was pretty tipsy, which only boosted my misguided confidence. Without any hesitation, I stumbled onto the dance floor, ready to bust some moves. In retrospect, there were several reasons why this was a bad idea. A. I was a teenage guy with the grace of a baby giraffe on roller skate. B. I had no idea how to dance. C. I didn't even know it was a Taylor Swift song. I just heard the beat and thought it was something generic enough to handle. The song blared, and I attempted to mimic the movements of the people around me. But instead of blending in, I quickly became the center of attention for all the wrong reasons. I lost my balance and went down hard, flailing in a way that was more slapstick comedy than smooth dance moves. I remember looking up from the floor, seeing the amused and bewildered faces of the guests around me, and wishing the ground would swallow me whole. The laughter started softly but quickly spread. My friends, trying to be supportive, were half laughing and half cheering me on, but I could see the amusement in their eyes. Some people tried to help me up, 
but every time I got back on my feet, I managed to trip over myself again. It was like a bad slapstick routine that no one could look away from. Story 21. Everyone was eagerly waiting to hear the bride and groom exchange their vow. The bride went first, and her words were everything you'd expect. Sincere, emotional, and full of love for her soon-to-be husband. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Then it was the groom's turn. He stood up, cleared his throat, and addressed the crowd with a confident smile. It started off normal enough, but quickly took a strange turn. Instead of speaking to his bride, he began thanking his friends and family, as if he was accepting an Oscar. Thank you all for being here, he began. I see my college buddies over there. Love you guys. And my parents, who made this all possible, couldn't have done it without you. He went on like this for a good five minutes, cracking corny jokes and name-dropping people in the audience. Hey, Bob, remember that time in Vegas? Just kidding. Let's not talk about that here, he quipped to a few awkward chuck. The bride stood beside him, smiling politely but clearly expecting something more personal and heartfelt. He barely mentioned his bride, who was standing right there looking a bit puzzled and increasingly uncomfortable. He didn't share any special memories or talk about their future together. It was as if he forgot she was even there. The crowd shifted uneasily, exchanging glances. This was supposed to be a declaration of his love and commitment, but it felt more like a stand-up routine mixed with an acceptance speech. The disconnect was palpable. Finally, he wrapped it up with, And oh yeah, to my beautiful bride, I love you. Let's do this. He leaned in for a quick kiss, and that was it. The whole thing felt rushed and impersonal like an afterthought. The bride, ever the gracious one, gave a little smile and went along with it, but you could see the disappointment in her eyes. Story 22. The mood was celebratory and warm as we all gathered to toast the happy couple. Then it came time for the father of the bride to give his speech. He stood up, a bit unsteady on his feet, holding a few scraps of toilet paper that he had apparently used to jot down some notes. From the get-go, it was clear this was not going to be a typical heartfelt father of the bride's speech. He started with what seemed to be a joke, but it fell flat. Then he began rambling, not sticking to whatever he had scribbled on the toilet paper. His speech was all over the place, long, disjointed, and increasingly cringeworthy. He shared awkward anecdotes from the bride's childhood, many of which probably should have stayed private. He moved on to some strange and disjointed advice for the newlyweds that included everything from how to keep houseplants alive to bizarre tips on personal hygiene. As he continued, you could see the bride and groom's forced smiles starting to wane. Guests were exchanging uneasy glances, silently asking each other who would have the courage to intervene. My brother-in-law and I were sitting at our table, growing more and more uncomfortable by the minute. We whispered back and forth, trying to decide when we should step in. We watched the father of the bride closely, waiting for a natural pause in his speech to make our move. The speech dragged on, with many of us squirming in our seats. There was a point where he seemed to forget where he was entirely talking about his golf game and the time he caught a particularly big fish. The bride was looking down at her hands, clearly embarrassed, while the groom tried to maintain a supportive smile. Just as my brother-in-law and I were about to get up and gently escort him away, the father of the bride seemed to find some semblance of self-awareness. He looked around, saw the strained expressions, and finally decided to wrap it up. He ended with a slurred but heartfelt, To my beautiful daughter and her new husband, may you have a lifetime of happiness. With that, he stumbled back to his seat, and a collective sigh of relief spread through the room. Story 23. The DJ called for the bride and her father to take the floor. The bride, beaming with anticipation, made her way to the center of the dance floor, but her father was nowhere to be seen. Guests started to murmur, looking around for him. After a few moments, someone pointed him out, sitting at a table with a stern expression on his face. The bride called out to him, her voice filled with hope and a bit of desperation, but he just shook his head. Several people, including close family members, approached him trying to coax him out of his seat, but he outright refused. His face was set, and it was clear that no amount of persuasion would change his mind. The bride stood there, alone on the dance floor, her smile faltering as the seconds ticked by. The room grew tense, the joyful atmosphere replaced by an uncomfortable silence. Guests looked at each other with confusion and sympathy, unsure of what to do. Just when it seemed like the moment would be completely ruined, a man, someone who appeared to be a distant relative or perhaps just a kind guest, stepped forward. He walked up to the bride with a gentle smile and offered his hand. She hesitated for a moment, clearly holding back tears, but then accepted his gesture. As they began to dance, the room slowly came back to life. People started to clap and cheer, trying to salvage the moment and show their support for the bride. The man danced with her gracefully, and though it wasn't the father-daughter dance she had dreamed of, it was a poignant and touching gesture that showed the kindness of strangers. The bride's eyes glistened with unshed tears, but she managed to keep her composure. The dance, though bittersweet, became a symbol of resilience 
and the unexpected support that can come from the unlikeliest of places. After the dance, the reception continued, but the incident left a lingering shadow over the evening. Guests whispered about the father's refusal, speculating on the reasons behind his actions. Some said he might have been overwhelmed with emotion, while others suggested deeper family issues. Whatever the reason, it was clear that his absence had deeply affected his daughter. Story 24. My wedding day was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, but instead, it turned into a chaotic, unforgettable disaster. It all started with a feud between two groups of cousins. One group was supposed to welcome the groom's party, but the other group decided they weren't allowed to be involved. This disagreement quickly escalated into a massive fight, creating an atmosphere of hostility that lingered throughout the entire wedding. Things only went downhill from there. The cameraman, who was hired to capture every beautiful moment, backed out an hour before the wedding. We had to make do with someone filming the ceremony on their phone, resulting in a wedding video that looked like it was shot by a high school kid. Then the DJ lost the playlist. There was no backup plan, so we were left without a DJ and had to scramble to find someone who could at least keep some music playing. It was a mess. To top it all off, the makeup artist overbooked her schedule that morning. Instead of coming herself, she sent a random colleague who had no idea how my makeup should have been done. The colleague didn't think to show a photo from the makeup trial, so I ended up being almost two hours late to my own wedding. I wasn't shown a mirror at all and had no idea what I looked like until the photographs were printed. It was horrifying to see the results later. The chaos didn't stop there. The bride's aunts picked a fight with the groom's parents, accusing them of not bringing any gifts. The gifts were actually in the car, but the argument escalated and was all caught on camera. In the end, all of this chaos somehow became my fault. People blamed me for everything, even though it was completely out of my control and I knew nothing about most of it until later. It led to everyone involved picking fights with me, and I ended up not speaking to many of them for about a decade. As if all that wasn't enough, one of my bridesmaids wore a dress that was the same color as mine and had very similar makeup. It was an obvious attempt to steal the spotlight, and needless to say, our friendship didn't last much longer after she was given a stern talking to for her stunt. Funnily enough, over a decade later, this same bridesmaid tried to get back in touch because her sister was marrying someone who lived near me. She wanted a convenient pit stop. Needless to say, I had no interest in rekindling that friendship. Story 25. As Mr. Methane took the stage, there was a mix of curiosity and confusion among the guests. Known for his unique talent of controlled flatulence, his act was far from the usual wedding entertainment. The older guests exchanged puzzled looks, while the younger ones snickered, unsure of what to expect. He started his performance with some light-hearted banter, but it quickly devolved into a barrage of crude jokes and profanity, which didn't sit well with the more conservative guests. There were gasps and awkward chuckles as he effed and jeffed his way through his routine, showing no regard for the mixed audience of children, parents, and grandparents. The climax of his act was the most outrageous part. Mr. Methane announced he was about to perform his signature trick, farting a dart out of his anus to pop a balloon hanging over the best man's head. The best man, who had clearly not been informed of this part of the act, looked visibly uncomfortable but went along with it, perhaps thinking it was all in good fun. As Mr. Methane positioned himself and the audience held their breath, he let out a loud, controlled fart, sending the dart flying across the room. It hit the balloon with surprising accuracy, popping it and releasing a shower of glitter over the best man. The room erupted in a mixture of laughter, disbelief and a fair amount of shock. The bride and groom, though initially stunned, tried to laugh it off, but it was clear that the choice of entertainment was a misstep. The older guests looked horrified. Some parents covered their children's ears, and the atmosphere shifted from festive to awkward. After Mr. Methane's performance, conversations buzzed with incredulity. Guests couldn't believe what they had just witnessed at what was supposed to be a joyous and elegant celebration. The rest of the evening was spent trying to recover from the bizarre turn of events. The best man, now covered in glitter, took it in stride, making jokes about his newfound spark, but the shock of the performance lingered. Story 26. My husband used to work in a catering hall during his high school weekends, a beautiful venue with an outdoor gazebo perfect for ceremonies. Over the years, he accumulated some pretty wild stories. Here are a few of the most memorable ones he shared with me. 1. The funnel wedding. This one is both strange and slightly morbid. No less than 10 female relatives on the groom's side showed up wearing full black attire, not for any religious reasons, just because they claimed to be mourning. It was a wedding, but they treated it like a funeral. The mother of the groom even wore a full face veil. The kitchen staff couldn't help but refer to it as the fun a wedding for the rest of the night. It was bizarre to see such a stark contrast between the joyful celebration and the morning cloak. It definitely put a damper on the festivities, and the bride looked visibly uncomfortable the entire time. 2. The White Trash Brawl This venue, despite its beauty, 
had a reputation for booking some rowdy weddings. One particularly infamous event turned into an all-out brawl. It started with a fist fight between the groom and the bride's brother, which quickly escalated into a 25-person melee. People were hitting each other with chairs, patio umbrellas, and anything they could get their hands on from the restaurant portion of the hall. The fight spilled into the parking lot, creating utter chaos. State troopers showing up was a common occurrence at this venue, thanks to the wedding planner who seemed to have a knack for booking such events. Thankfully, after they fired her, things quieted down significantly. 3. The ex in the poofy dress. This one takes the cake for sheer drama. The groom's ex showed up at the wedding wearing a poofy dress that looked like a bleached quinceanera dress. She was removed by security before she could cause too much of a scene, but her presence was enough to create a buzz. Interestingly, the wedding planner had anticipated this and had a clause in the contract specifically about her. The staff was briefed with instructions. X will show up guaranteed. Do not engage and notify security immediately. It was almost like they had a prophecy about this woman's antics. Four. The Pajama Proclamation. This one is a bit more personal and petty. At our own wedding, my now ex-sister-in-law loudly proclaimed to multiple people that her outfit was actually pajama. She never liked me, so her attempt to undermine the occasion wasn't entirely surprising, but it was still annoying. Fortunately, her outfit was cute enough that it didn't cause too much of a stir, but the fact that she went out of her way to point it out was just another little jab. 5. The Khmer Wedding Flower Fiasco. For our traditional Khmer wedding, my in-laws decided to take things into their own hands in a very unexpected way. I had ordered beautiful flowers for the ceremony, but they ripped them apart and ended up throwing them at us as part of one of the ceremonies. You can see my range of emotions in the photos as I processed what was happening. It's something that still irritates me to this day. I had planned every detail carefully, and seeing those flowers destroyed was heartbreaking. Story 27 I spent 20 years as a wedding DJ, and while many events blur together in my memory, some stand out for their sheer craziness. One wedding in particular comes to mind, held at a super redneck gun club. It was one of those gigs where everything that could go wrong did, in spectacular fashion. The day started off well enough, with the usual blend of country tunes and classic rock filling the air as guests arrived. The venue was rustic, with plenty of plaid shirts and cowboy boots, but the atmosphere was cheerful and laid back. However, things took a dark turn pretty quickly. The bride's father was known to be a heavy drinker, and it didn't take long for him to reach his limit. He stumbled around, slurring his words and causing minor scenes here and there. Then, without warning, he tripped and fell face first into the corner of a square table. The impact was brutal, and the amount of blood was alarming. He was knocked out cold. The scene turned chaotic as people rushed to his aid. Someone called an ambulance, and within minutes, the flashing lights arrived. The paramedics started attending to the bride's father. But the commotion drew the attention of the police, who showed up shortly after. This is where things got even more out of hand. The venue had been serving alcohol pretty freely, and several underage guests had taken advantage of this. With the cops on the scene, the staff and some of the older guests panicked, worried about the club losing its liquor license. In a mad scramble, they started shoving these miners into the back of an Impala like it was a clown car. I watched as the car filled up to an almost comedic degree, with kids practically sitting on each other's laps to avoid detection. As if that wasn't enough, the sight of the bride's father bleeding profusely and the arrival of the authorities seemed to ignite a powder keg of grievances among the guests. What had been a relatively calm evening exploded into a series of heated arguments. It was like everyone had been waiting for an excuse to air their dirty laundry, and this was it. I stood by my DJ booth, playing background music and trying to stay out of the line of fire. Couples shouted at each other, friends got into shouting matches, and the overall mood shifted from festive to hostile. I focused on my equipment, avoiding eye contact with anyone who looked like they might pull me into their drama. The whole thing was a powder keg, and I didn't want to be caught in the blast radius. Story 28 During the gift-giving portion of the evening, the father of the bride decided to present the groom with a rather unconventional gift, a whip. He handed it over with a grin and said, This is to keep my daughter in line. The room fell silent, the atmosphere thick with a mix of shock, and discomfort. People exchanged uneasy glances, not quite sure if they had heard him correctly. The bride's face turned pale, and the groom forced an awkward smile, clearly unsure how to respond. But the father of the bride wasn't done. To everyone's astonishment, he stepped into the middle of the ballroom and cracked the whip loudly, the sharp sound echoing through the room. The tension was palpable. Guests were stunned, some nervously laughing while others looked on in horror. It was an uncomfortable spectacle that overshadowed what should have been a joyous celebration. As if that wasn't enough, the MC for the evening seemed determined to add to the awkwardness. During every announcement, he made increasingly flirtatious comments about the mother of the bride, who was visibly uncomfortable. The mother of the bride, 
happily married and clearly not interested in the MC's advances, tried to laugh it off, but her discomfort was obvious to everyone. Let's give a big round of applause for the gorgeous mother of the bride, he'd say, winking exaggeratedly. Or, if only I'd met her first, the bride's father's face grew redder with each comment, but the MC seemed oblivious to the tension he was causing. The bride and groom tried to maintain their composure, but the evening had taken on a surreal quality. The father of the bride's inappropriate gift and behavior, combined with the MC's relentless flirting, created an atmosphere of discomfort and bewildered. Guests were unsure how to react, caught between wanting to support the couple and the sheer absurdity of the situation. Story 29. Everything was going perfectly until the priest, standing before the couple, pronounced them husband and wife. It was time for the long-awaited first kiss as a married couple a moment everyone eagerly anticipated. The photographer was positioned perfectly to capture this magical instant, and guests leaned forward, phones at the ready. The couple leaned in, eyes closed, ready to share their first kiss as husband and wife. But just as their lips were about to meet, the priest, seemingly without thinking, lifted his Bible and placed it right in front of their faces. The book completely blocked the view, obstructing what should have been the most beautiful and intimate moment of the ceremony. There was an audible gasp from the guests. The photographer, poised to snap the perfect shot, looked stunned and quickly tried to adjust. But the moment was lost. The bride and groom, clearly surprised, managed to share their kiss behind the impromptu barrier. But the magic of the moment had been tainted. Afterward, during the recessional, you could see the disappointment on their faces. They had looked forward to this moment, only to have it overshadowed by an awkward, unnecessary gesture. The guests murmured among themselves expressing their disbelief and sympathy for the couple. Many shared the sentiment that while it might be frowned upon by some to kiss in the church, it was no reason to ruin such a special moment. Story 30. As he began to talk about the significance of the wedding rings, he unexpectedly veered off into a rather unusual analogy. Instead of focusing on the traditional symbolism of unity and eternal love, he likened the rings to shackles and a ball and chain. These rings, he said, holding them up for everyone to see, are like shackles binding you together, a ball and chain that you will carry for the rest of your lives. There was an audible gasp from the guests. The bride and groom exchanged bewildered glances, clearly taken aback by the harsh comparison. You could see the discomfort on their faces as they tried to smile through it, but the damage was done. The romantic atmosphere had been replaced by an awkward tension. The priest continued his speech, seemingly oblivious to the reaction of the crowd. He went on about the burdens and sacrifices of marriage, painting a rather bleak picture of what should have been a joyous commitment. By the time he finished, the mood in the church had shifted significantly. The rest of the ceremony proceeded without further incident, but the priest's words lingered in the air. During the reception, guests couldn't stop talking about the bizarre analogy. The bride and groom tried to laugh it off, but it was clear that they were bothered by the priest's unexpected commentary. Sadly, the priest's ominous comparison seemed to foreshadow the couple's future. The marriage lasted only about four months before the groom decided to call it quits. Friends and family speculated that the priest's words might have planted a seed of doubt, or perhaps highlighted underlying issues that the couple was not fully prepared to face. Story 31 I used to work catering for high-end events at large hotels, the kind of places where celebrities like Oprah would host fundraisers when they were in town. One night, I was working at a particularly lavish wedding. It was clear from the start that the bride's family had footed the bill for every. The venue was adorned with extravagant decorations, and the atmosphere was opulent. However, it was also evident that the groom was marrying into money. His groomsmen, though nice enough, stood out. They appeared to be from less affluent backgrounds, noticeably different from the bride's polished, upscale crowd. The ceremony went smoothly, a beautiful event that seemed picture-perfect. But once the reception started, Things quickly took a turn for the worse. Despite the open bar, the groomsmen had sneaked in a case of cheap liquor and were well on their way to getting completely shit-faced within the first hour. Their rowdy behavior escalated quickly, creating an undercurrent of tension that everyone could feel. Then, the chaos truly began. What started as drunken antics soon turned violent. A fight broke out among the groomsmen. Glasses were thrown, plates shattered, and even a table was flipped. It was mayhem. The event staff, including myself, were swiftly pulled from the room while security was called in to manage the situation. The few minutes between us leaving and security arriving felt like an eternity. When security finally got there, the scene had taken a horrifying turn. One of the groomsmen had broken a beer bottle and used it to stab another groomsman in the neck. Tragically, the injured groomsman didn't survive. The entire event was thrown into disarray. The celebration turned into a crime scene, and the police were called in to investigate. We weren't allowed to clean up the event venue for three days while the investigation took place. The hotel was cordoned off, 
a stark contrast to the festive decorations that now seemed eerily out of place. Story 32. My wife had been feeling a bit off that morning, but we chalked it up to the typical discomforts of pregnancy. As the ceremony progressed, she started to feel faint. Recognizing the signs, we decided to quietly make our way back across the field to the reception building. Just as we reached the bottom of the steps leading up to the building, her legs gave out and she collapsed. I managed to catch her just in time. A few attentive guests noticed and rushed over to help. In that moment, adrenaline kicked in and I scooped her up in my arms and carried her up the steps to the building. I was later told it looked quite heroic, like something out of a movie. I laid her down gently inside and she started to come around. The relief I felt when she opened her eyes was immense. An ambulance arrived shortly after to check on her and the paramedics confirmed she was fine. They attributed the fainting to a combination of pregnancy and low iron, a condition we hadn't been aware of until that day. Story 33. My cousin's wedding. The bride, bless her heart, decided to get a karaoke machine with two microphones for the reception entertainment. She'd been practicing for months taking singing lessons and everything just so she could belt out time after time. Perfect. This was supposed to be her big moment. She imagined it would be a hit, a sweet memory she and her new husband could cherish. But you know what they say about the best laid plans, right? Turns out a group of our cousins had set up camp at one of the tables and they were pounding drinks like it was their last night on earth. By the time the karaoke machine was fired up, they were well past tipsy and into the realm of downright drunk. And when those two microphones were turned on, it was like a beacon for their boozy bravado. So they grabbed one of the mics and decided that louder was definitely better. Forget about pitch or rhythm. They were just screaming the lyrics as they flashed on the screen. Imagine a bunch of rowdy guys in a tight huddle, each one trying to outshout the other. It was chaotic and it was loud, painfully loud. The bride, standing there with her carefully prepared song, tried to make the best of it. She started singing time after time but her voice was drowned out by the cacophony of drunken yelling. You could see her face fall as she realized her special moment was slipping away, replaced by this nightmare of noise. She tried to keep going, tears welling up in her eyes, but it was hopeless. That's when I decided I had to step in. I walked over to the drunken huddle and managed to wrestle the microphone away from them. I tried to explain what was happening, pointing out the bride, who was now openly crying. A few of the guys saw her and backed off looking a bit sheepish. But a couple were so far gone they couldn't even process what I was saying. They just kept yelling and stumbling around, completely oblivious. The scene inside was unbearable. It was supposed to be a joyous celebration, but it felt more like a disaster. We finally decided we couldn't take it anymore. We left the wedding early, feeling a mix of disappointment and frustration. Outside the venue, it was like a different world. More than half the guests had retreated there, trying to salvage some semblance of a good time. They were standing around in small groups, attempting conversations over the muffled racket from inside. You could see the tension and discomfort on their faces. I kept thinking about the bride, how hard she'd worked on that song, and how those drunken fools had ruined it. Weddings are supposed to be about love and joy, but sometimes all it takes is a few bad decisions to turn everything upside down. It was a night meant for celebration, but it ended up being a lesson in how quickly things can go wrong when you mix too much alcohol with too little consideration. Story 34. So there we were, up in upstate New York, at this big, rustic, and beautifully remote resort for my cousin's wedding. The setting was straight out of a postcard. Rolling hills, dense woods, and this charming old lodge that looked like it was pulled from another era. It was the perfect backdrop for what was supposed to be a perfect day. Now, the bride's father and stepmother, being the adventurous sorts, decided to do a bit of exploring before the ceremony. They wandered off to check out this old birding and hunting platform that was tucked away on the property. The platform had seen better days, but curiosity got the better of them. So there they were, poking around, when suddenly the stepmother lost her footing. One wrong step and she slipped. In a split second, she grabbed onto the edge of the platform to steady herself, but instead of finding support, her hand found a jagged, rusty edge. And just like that, slice, her finger was severed. It was a gruesome scene. The father, in a panic, wrapped her hand in his shirt and they rushed back to the main lodge. Everyone was in a flurry of activity when they burst in. Blood everywhere. And it was clear something had gone terribly wrong. They rushed her to the nearest emergency room, which, given the remote location, wasn't exactly around the corner. The medical team there did what they could. They stitched up the nub where her finger used to be. But reattaching the digit was out of the question. The finger was lost, and there was no getting it back. You'd think that'd be enough to sideline anyone, especially on a day as significant as a wedding. But not the bride's stepmother. Nope. She was determined to be there for her stepdaughter. Finger. Or no finger. So, after getting patched up, she came back to the resort, her hand wrapped in a giant wad of gauze that looked more like a boxing glove than a bandage. She made it to the ceremony, holding her hand delicately, 
As she navigated through the well-wishers and curious glances, it was surreal. There she was, dressed to the nines, looking every bit the elegant guest, except for that massive, conspicuous bandit. People whispered and speculated, but she held her head high, refusing to let her injury overshadow the bride's big day. The ceremony itself was beautiful, almost magical in that rustic setting. The bride walked down the aisle with a smile that could light up the darkest night, her father by her side, still a bit pale from the morning's ordeal, but managing to keep it together. And there, sitting in the front row, was the stepmother, clapping awkwardly with her one good hand, beaming with pride and love despite the pain she was surely in. After the vows were exchanged and the couple kissed, the reception kicked off. The stepmother was a trooper, mingling with guests and even managing to dance a little, her bandaged hand held gingerly. It was a testament to her spirit and the strength of family bonds.